that was a very stylish film. I really enjoyed it. Um, Anthony, you and Natalie co-wrote this. Where did you get the idea? What was, what was the origin? Uh, I was in London working on another uh, film and not having a great time. And I was staying in an apartment and I'd realized that I'd been there for two months and I'd never seen another single living soul in this building. And late at night, this woman would come home and she would walk around upstairs and you'd hear her heels uh, click clacking. And it was really, uh, that was the kind of germ of the idea. And then I'd kind of built it out a little from there. Um, and it was about, a, it was gonna be a thriller about a blind woman. Um, and then I kept talking about it with Nat. And then we got to a place, I don't know, it was probably a couple of years later, um, where we had continued talking about it and I'd met with a couple of other people, but it never clicked. And then I just said to Nat, you should write this with me because, well, you can tell the rest of that. Because? Well, you were in a different place and so you were going, oh, you know, you weren't, you know, you're not getting the roles that you want. So it was like, let's be the master of your own destiny. And was, write the, write yeah. the role that you want. I was frustrated uh, with the landscape that was on offer at that time um, for fully fleshed out three-dimensional female protagonists. Um, it just wasn't there or being offered to me. So when Anthony said, and I knew so well what he saw in his head and what he wanted, um, mm. his sensibility, I, we were just on the same page. So it was like, okay, let's see if we can do this. What was the process, and I know you're supposed to ask a question, <laughs> <laughs> but what was the process in terms of you throwing stuff back and forwards and did like one of you write the cafe scene, the other one wrote the yeah. elevator scene and then you threw them back and forwards, so how did it work? We worked out really quickly. It was that a we nightmare, can't right? work. <laughs> okay. We worked out, re let's, okay, let's sanitize it. We worked out really quickly that we couldn't just write together in the same room one line at a time. And so, yeah, we took ownership of a scene and wrote a scene. Well, we only realized that like at the very, very end when we started discussing it with other writers and they went, you you, you were in the same room? You were like, you know, yeah. just either sitting on the same couch or at the table? And they were like, that's crazy. Very few people do that, you come to realize. You know, you, so you've got to email each other and pass them You back pass it back and forth and every time the scene alters slightly, it grows, it evolves. But in answer to your question, yes, innately, there are certain scenes that I feel ownership of, mm -hmm. even though Anthony might have done more Which passes. Ones? <laughs> I'm genuinely I mean, the interested. ones that feel I like I don't Anthony's remember any of them. No. They, it's just well, it, for instance, it, my, you you remember them. I'm not you, possessive. You <laughs> remember them, and you go, "I wrote that scene." I'm like, "No, you That's didn't." That's not true. All the good ones. Yeah, um, all the good no, ones. For instance, the the scene on the bench with James Cosmo. Yes. I think of that as a nut scene. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about let, <laughs> let's talk about story. Actually, I have another question. Sorry. It's poor man. <laughs> <laughs> it's poor man. It's a good question. It was a good opener. Go okay. on. Okay. Um, this is a, obviously a very layered <laughs> screenplay. We have a, a thriller, a political story. Um, at first, I, the feeling this might be going in the way of. Uh, Audrey Hepburn, that movie, Wait uh, Until Dark, in the dark. Mm -hmm. but you take it in a totally different direction. Talk about that, the, the, the layering of, of, the, the, of stories and, and plot and style. And style. Well, the style, the style is probably just something that's you know, been happening. I've done a lot of TV drama, and so I've, been just, I've developed my own sort of visual grammar. But then the visual grammar for this is entirely different because it's dictated by the fact that you're removing um, sight from your central character. And so you have to deliver that, uh, that world and her experience um, visually and orally to the audience. Um, so that was really fun to sit down and figure that out because that, a lot of that has to go into the screenplay as well um, because you're constantly thinking she's blind, she can't see, so what can we show? Um, and that was challenging in a very creative way for me as a director, but also for both of us when we were writing, and obviously helped Nat form the character and the behavior. Um, so that was important. The layers, the layers, I guess it was just a challenge for us. It was, I've said it before in terms of you're trying to deconstruct a genre and you look at certain movies and then you go, 
you sort of build it back together from the ground up. And that was the challenge and the fun of sitting in a room and going, but what if we did this? But it was also the challenge in rewriting it and going through the notes that we were getting because you would unpick one piece and then all of a sudden a whole act would kind of unravel and you'd go, oh shit, now we've got to build it back up again. I did, sorry, just to answer the one thing you referenced. I, I did a lot of research on the Yugoslav, on the Bosnian War, and there's an amazing book by a man called Malcolm Knoll. And, um, oh God, now I'm scared it's Noel, Noel Malcolm. It's one of the <laughs> typical when you're in an interview situation. Um, um, but it, it, we, we were making a genre film. I want to be really clear. It's not a documentary on, it's not a drama, it's not a, it's not a, a war drama. And it's also not a documentary on blindness. So um, we, I would always want to reassure people that we did nothing with any sense of disrespect. We did our no, research, no. we knew our history, mm -hmm. um, and we'd done our research with the Royal National Institute of Blind People and so forth regards that area as well. But what we are making is a thriller. Okay. So therefore, stylistically, and the choices made and the time spent, it is a thriller. Part of this genre is that nobody really is who they're supposed to be. Mm. <laughs> so when we start off, for example, your character, Ed, mm. who is he? What, what is... I mean, in terms of, in terms of his, where he's, he, he's placed in the world, you know, he's, he's very much under the thumb of his sister. Uh, in the shadow of his sister and, and, and working for a um, criminal organization. In terms of the internal, he's a, he's a um, we see him go on a journey and, and gain a, a sense of kind of emotional literacy and, um, and become more open with his, um, uh, with his emotions and sort of take control, control somewhat more. Um, and in that regard, he was a very interesting. He was a very interesting um, character play, to play. 